things where you live. Obviously, in an apartment building, you're afforded a great degree of anonymity. And if you're not expecting anyone to come by, it's going to be really weird for that knock. So I'm already going to be a little suspicious. Peepholes are great. But if I'm on the other side of the peephole, I can tell if you're looking through it or not just by the light. Yeah. Uh, find somewhere in your house, if possible, where you can get an angle on that door to physically see the person. And if you're going to answer the door, don't walk up the door to do it. They can hear you talking to them probably from further deeper in the room. So if you say, who is it from the kitchen and they kick the door in, you've at least got some distance to work with. So you're saying people, but what if you are going to open the door? Have you ever tried or have you ever done this before? Usually when I open the door, I try to put my foot right there at the base of that floorboard. So if someone tries it, to hit it and nudge it, at least I can do something. I mean, yeah, you're, you're a pretty decent sized guy. So that would probably work out for you, depending on the size of the person on the other side of the door. Uh, but it's not something I would recommend for a lot of people, because if someone puts a lot of weight into that door, it's you're going to be e it's going to be easier for them to push than it is for you to push back. They're going to have the leverage because they're going to put their whole body weight. into it, uh, And you could actually end up significantly injured using that technique. Uh, door stops are a great idea. You can buy them at Home Depot. They're really cheap, made out of rubber, little isosceles triangle looking thing. Yeah. Have one of those close by that if you have an unexpected knock on the door, you can kick that out and kick it right underneath the door as soon as you open it that small crack. Uh, so then you can interact with that person through the small crack in the door if you have to open the door. And if they do decide to try to bum rush into the house, it's going to be significantly harder for them to do. Now, the training you said you do you, in, in simulations, do you do stuff like that in a home evasion yeah. scenario? Yeah, I have, so, a, I have a, two day, a two day home defense course that goes over everything. I try to cover as many variables as possible in those two days. So you do uh, training as far as uh, drawing your weapon, uh, going for it. Uh, what are some of the things you suggest for people who are at home, where they should store a weapon? Um, should they have one upstairs, downstairs? Where's the ideal place to kind of have, just so people can think about it? Well, if you have children, then you need a quick access safe next to the bed. But I'm a huge proponent of home carry. Anytime you're awake and at the house, uh, as often as possible, carry the gun on you just like you would out in the general public with your CCW or, or your CPL or whatever your state calls your concealed license. There's no reason not to have a gun on you. And the advantage of having the gun on you if you have children is you don't have to worry about setting it down somewhere and then having access to it, especially if they're really young and they still don't understand firearm safety. So if you home carry, anytime someone knocks on the door or anytime you hear a bump or anything you need to investigate, you're already armed. You don't have to rush to the bedroom to get your gun or rush to the, the den or the office or wherever you store your firearms. Uh, me personally, I, I home carry. And then when it's time to go to bed, the gun goes next to the bed because I don't have kids. But if I did, I'd have one of those quick access pistol boxes. Now, do you ever do any training with family members as far as a mother and a father who have yes. a child? Tell me a little bit about that. Cause there's a lot of people who always, uh, ask me questions. I'm a father. I'm caring for the first time. What can I do to be safe around my child? And how can I, I introduce, how can I introduce weapons to my child once they get older, you know, to where I feel they're comfortable? Yeah. The, uh, I'm actually working on a class specifically for parents of small children or couples or friends, basically a couples and kids class is probably what I'm going to end up calling it just because that's a good name. Um, but when you have to protect a child, especially a child you have to carry, a very small child, uh, your, your self-defense dynamic totally changes. Uh, you have different concerns, you have different focuses, and you have different problems um, you're going to have with, with self-defense. Uh, and it's really kind of hard to get into that in a short period of time. But if you're working with a stroller or a baby carrier or something like that, a lot of my students, a lot of my regular alumni uh, have small children. And I don't, but I think about the problem because, because of my customer base, because of my student base. Uh, and I'm, I've gotten a lot of priceless feedback from some of my, my oldest alumni who have smaller children on, on how to develop techniques that will allow someone carrying a child to be able to uh, defensively protect their child and their loved ones as, as they move away from the threat. Um, but it's, it's really hard to get into two-dimensional descriptions of that. All right, well, we're going to go to break really quick. Uh, thank you for listening to the InfoWars Overdrive Hour. I'm your host, Joe Biggs. We'll be back in just a little bit with more information from Aaron Cohen of Sage Dynamics. Thanks. And welcome back to the InfoWars Overdrive segment. I'm your host, Joe Biggs, and with me today is Aaron Cohen of Sage Dynamics. Now, once again, if you're just now joining us, the money bomb has been extended on till Sunday, and free shipping will continue on until tonight at midnight. There's about nine hours and five minutes left in that. There's a lot of great specials going on. And once again, I'd like to thank everybody out there, the listeners, for the success this money bomb has become. You guys are amazing. 
I love talking to you guys on Twitter, Facebook, everything like that, being able to interact and hear what you guys have to say. Now let's get back to Aaron and talk about what people should do as far as training, day-to-day -day training as someone who's going to be concealed carry or just to have the knowledge. Uh, there's a big difference between training and practice. Training is where you receive proper techniques from a verified instructor, and practice is where you practice those techniques to proficiency. You can't technically get training from a one-way communication source like YouTube. I consider everything I do on YouTube as a training supplement or a practice supplement. It's something to look at to give you a new way of thinking of things. But it's not necessarily a replacement for actually going to someone who teaches people self-defense uh, for a living. Uh, and people say, well, I own a gun, then I'm fine. Well, if you own a set of medical tools, you are not a surgeon. You just have a set of medical tools. And I kind of look at firearms in the same way. It's a very professional driven skill set. So you should seek out a professional to at least get you a basic skill set that you can then build on. You don't have to train constantly. You should train as often as you could, as many different subjects as you can. But I don't feel like you're doing yourself a really big favor by just owning a firearm and going to the range and shooting paper every now and then. Uh, you really have to seek out a verifiable, reputable instructor. Uh, someone who can provide you with a different way of seeing things, a different way of thinking of things, or for those that live in an urban area who only have access to indoor ranges, at least taking a class will allow you to practice techniques and train under techniques that you don't normally get to do. So do you ever do you ever have people contact you and say, hey, can you come in and check my home? Can you come in and check my place of business to see if we're yeah. up to par? But tell me a little bit about that process, how that works. Well, it's not a, an advertised service I offer, but if someone contacts me and has genuine concerns about it, especially if it's one of my alumni, I'm more than happy to help out. I'm not a home security expert, expert as far as like electronics and glass break and motion sensors and things like that go, but I know, understand physical security. So I can go in and identify weak points in the home, identify things that might need to be adjusted to prevent uh, forcible entries, and to, especially in the business world, to change employee behaviors to minimize the chances of a break-in or a hostage situation or any kind of forcible felony that's gonna take place when the business is open. Um, it, it's really as simple as coming in and thinking like a criminal. How would I, as the criminal, where are the weak points that I would exploit? And then I have to strengthen people in that area. All right, well, today I've gotta to say, man, you have been a fantastic guest and uh, hopefully we can get you back on here Again, now, once again, before we uh, end this show, can you just go ahead and tell everybody again how they can reach you, uh, what they can expect from you, things like that? Uh, I'm on, uh, again, sagedynamics.org is the website, training calendars there. Um, I'm pretty active on Instagram, at sagedynamics, Twitter, at sagedynamics, and then the YouTube, if you want to look through all the videos. I put up a video a week. Uh, they do tend to run kind of long because they have a lot to talk about. Uh, but that's YouTube forward slash Sage Dynamics. Uh, and I'll be announcing the 2016 training calendar soon, and I'll be all over the U.S. next year, um, just like I was this year. So uh, I look forward to seeing all kinds of InfoWars listeners and classes. All right, well, that's it for today's show. Once again, make sure you go to InfoWarsLife.com. Both Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine and DNA Force are 25% off at the InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Make sure you go and check out the nightly news tonight. That starts at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Once again, this has been the InfoWars Overdrive, and I've been your host, Joe Biggs. Tune in on Sunday 